Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel today. Hello and welcome back to the channel today. It's your boy, you know the name, Jonathan Martinez. And today we are finally back. I'm so sorry it's been a while. I know it's been a week or two weeks or maybe three. I don't remember to be honest. Um, since I've last uploaded, no, actually, you know what, yeah, it has been a lot shorter than that. I feel like it's only been a week. Um, sorry guys, but it's been a week since I've been able to do my last Spider-Man review for you guys, which we are now finally up to The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, so The Amazing Spider-Man 2, I must say, was personally now mine. So I've actually never seen The Amazing Spider-Man 2, if I'm being honest. I've only ever seen a couple of scenes here and there, but, um, when watching The Amazing Spider-Man 2, I actually fell in love with it way more than the first one. I enjoyed the film so much for its story, its character development, the way it kind of took place in its um, universe. I feel like personally, since I have gotten to know Spider-Man as a character and Peter Parker of who he is truly, I feel like Amazing Spider-Man 2 has been the best way to show his backstory, especially knowing what has happened to his parents. So the director who did this, um, which was Mark Webb, Mark Webb did an amazing job of being able to tell the story of how his parents died and how they, you know, um, what they did and everything to, you know, give Peter Parker to Aunt May and Uncle Ben. So what was the story between that and why they did that? So it was a very detailed um, length of, you know, all about storiness in this film. So it was like not a, it wasn't so much uh, back and forth nonlinear structure, but it was in the beginning, it was like going back to the past of why, um, why Peter Parker's father, Richard Parker, did what he did and why, you know, he deleted all of the work of, of the Spider-Man stuff. Um, and yeah, basically coming up to the fact where uh, Peter Parker is right now and, you know, him trying to find answers about his family and not being able to receive it when he wants it. But anyway, apart from that, Sony did an amazing job in creating this film. I must say, watching it on my PlayStation, because um, I don't have the 4K version, since I have now finished the Blu-ray version of all these films, um, watching it in the 1080p it was, I still thought that the visuals were outstanding. I thought that Sony had amazing slow motion scenes, especially in Amazing Spider-Man 2, which is why now it's my Top, it's my one of my favorite Spider-Man films in terms of the Amazing Spider-Man series. This is my favorite one for sure. I definitely love the way the suit had, you know, so much detail when they went so close towards it. I will now say Electro is one of my favorite villains. Green Goblin is still always going to be my favorite, but Electro is now my second favorite um, supervillain. He did amazing in the film. I think Jamie Foxx, who played him, did an outstanding, brilliant job. I couldn't believe the amount of um, actor, acting, like, persona-wise he put into the character. I thought it was amazing to see, you know, how he came from being, how he went, you know, in other past films from what he was before into coming to play a villainous character. I thought it was very, very interesting. And just the way he pers per played the persona of the character for Electro, it was so different. It wasn't something you would see in any other sort of Spider-Man film. So I'm definitely excited to see if he is in No Way Home. I would love to see some comic book references though, so in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 he had more of a blue electric electricity feel, which is absolutely fine, but in the in the comic book series he does have a yellow sort of vibe with that, but I did love his suit in this film, I thought that was amazing. Um, Dane Dehan did play Harry Osborn in this film, um, he didn't play, in my opinion, to the extent that James Franco did for Harry Osborn. I do prefer the James Franco version of Harry Osborn much more for Green Goblin, especially for Green Goblin Jr. I thought it was very different to see, you know, two different character, two different actors play two different versions of that character. We also had Paul, um, I'm probably going to say his name, Paul Giamatti uh, play Rhino. That was very cool and interesting to see. Although he didn't have enough screen time, he just had enough to basically put so much into the character which was cool enough to see on screen as we haven't had that before especially for a live action we still you know had the same character the same actors of Andrew Garfield play Spider-Man, Emma Stone play Gwen Stacy we had our amazing Stanley come back for his all-time cameo in this film um, in both all, both Amazing Spider-Mans we only ever got one post credit scene which was in actually Sp Amazing Spider-Man 2 which was basically enough to, lead, to set us up for Amazing Spider-Man 3 
But in saying that, in the first three Spider-Mans, the one Tobey Maguire plays in, there is absolutely no post-credit scenes, and the Amazing Spider-Man one, no post-credit scenes at all, which kind of, I think for me, it would have been cool to get a post-credit scene, because then it kind of leads up for either for the next story or the next few years for them, what they're going to, you know, in terms of do for that. But apart from that, guys, I enjoyed this movie very much. I can't wait to see what uh, Spider-Man Homecoming has to offer. And basically, yeah, so look, Amazing Spider-Man 2 was definitely one of my favorite films for this version, for in terms of Amazing Spider-Man um, in that series. But yeah, look guys, apart from that, if you do always have a film you'd like me to review, please pop it in the comment section down below. As for always, guys, don't forget to go like, subscribe, turn the post notifications to boy writer, you know, come on guys, the usual. But anyway guys, apart from that, don't forget to go make sure you check out Spider-Man Homecoming, the film review, which will actually both be released on the same day, which either will be um, today or tomorrow, so hopefully it is today, but apart from that guys, yeah, as per always, this has been another Spider-Man film review, this was for The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Rise of Electro, which was a very good film in terms of my personal favourite Spider-Man films up right now, um, but yeah guys, look, thank you for tuning in today, you guys have been a huge support in how many subscribers we have gained over the past few weeks, you guys are always, you know, pushing and grinding for me to really release all these new content to you guys and don't forget i haven't forgotten about those recommendations you guys which will be come and see the film review that um film to saw me to um review that is coming to you guys very shortly and i still have the diary of a wimpy kid the animated trailer to review for you guys as well so don't forget about that guys which will be coming to you very shortly um, but apart from that, guys, as per always, thank you so much for tuning in today. And I, I'm so glad that and I know, sorry about the week's break. I, some, I just, you know, until I reach a thousand subscribers, then I'll be able to, you know, send out posts. So then you guys are always able to get those daily. So if you do want to reach a thousand subscribers, go hit that subscribe button. Go to all your friends and family. So we're always able to grind hard on this YouTube series. And we're always able to bring out new content for you guys weekly and most times daily. As per always, guys, I appreciate all the love and support. I hope you have a great day tonight. Peace.